Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And a lot of people brought up a question yesterday. They discussed the EMG studies when I talked about why the bench press is a good chest exercise. A lot of people brought up EMG studies and they talked about a lot of the work of Brett Contreras. And let me bring up a point here. EMG studies have been massively overused in the fitness industry and writings regarding what they are and are not capable of telling you. They've often been used to try to tell people that one exercise is 3% or 5% better than another. The way that these studies have been conducted cannot tell you this. That is not what they're capable of telling you. The way that most of these studies have been done, they're taking one lifter or two lifters and they're putting an external electrode on one, maybe two spots on the head of a muscle. They give surface readings and they're trying to use relative workloads with different exercises to check the mean and the peak muscle activation based upon this. Well, there's some problems with this methodology. First of all, in order to actually make this accurate for the muscle head that they're trying to measure, we would have to go back to some Auschwitz, Joseph Mengele type shit. It wouldn't pass through an ethics board in any first world country to study in a human being. Because what you would need to do if you wanted to see the lower pectoral activation and get it accurate, you're going to need to stick about 10 biopsy needles into the muscle. So 10 needles inside that person's pec while they're bench pressing and incline benching and decline benching and doing flies. That's what you would have to do, and it's probably going to cause a lot of tissue trauma and damage as a result, but it will give you the accurate readings. The surface readings only tell you how many of the muscle fibers near the surface of the skin in that little location around where the electrode is, uh, is actually being activated. It's not going to tell you what's happening deeper inside the muscle or in different parts of the same head of the muscle, something a big muscle like the pec. It's not telling you what's going on over here if the electrode's over here. And it's not telling you what's going on an inch or two inches deep inside the muscle. It's only telling you what's going on near the surface. Now, it could be reasonably accurate in some cases, but you're going to run into a situation where a different angle or exercise might recruit or have more muscle activation near the external part of the muscle than deeper inside. And as soon as you have a situation like that, you're going to have inaccurate readings. The other problem with it is people's neural efficiency varies. If you have someone who's been doing the decline dumbbell press and not been flat benching very often, they're going to have better neuromuscular efficiency through training that motor pattern. So if you were to get an accurate reading on them, that person is going to recruit more muscle fibers while doing that exercise versus the other. And particularly if they have a stronger ratio on it, they've gotten stronger on it so they're able to handle it a heavier weight easier than they would in proportion as if they had done both exercises religiously as their two primary chest exercises. They're going to be lifting more weight easier. They're going to use a heavier weight for the EMG. And you're going to see more muscle activation purely because they have better motor unit learning from doing the exercise over and over and doing the exercise more often. So there's the biggest problem with this methodology right there. Whatever exercises the person does most often in their routine for a given muscle group is probably going to be the one that's going to give superior EMG readings if the EMG is actually accurate and there's no guarantee that it is because of the limitations of the methodology. So what is it that EMG studies can tell us? EMG studies can tell us one of three things about a muscle because of the limited amount of data. It can tell us if a muscle doesn't really get recruited at all. It can tell us if a muscle is weakly recruited by an exercise and it can tell us if a muscle is strongly recruited by an exercise. It can't tell us that one is 3% or 5% better or worse than another. So what do all those EMG studies tell us about these various chest movements? That flat bench, incline, decline with dumbbells and barbells and dumbbell flies are all strong activators of the pectorals. That's what they actually tell us. Nothing more, nothing less. And it's exactly what you would expect. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicepius.